What's up Amazon sellers? Are you having a hard time choosing which products to sell on Amazon? Then don't worry, in this video, I'm gonna share with you which product categories to choose from and which products to think about and which products to avoid selling on Amazon. Stay tuned. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon now doing online arbitrage for the last five years. Now in the UK, I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller, check this out. And in the USA, I'm a six-figure Amazon seller, check this out. Now hopefully in the near future, we're gonna expand into another marketplace. And if you're interested in learning what I'm learning and my journey, then do make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. But hey, enough about me, what are we gonna go through today? Well, first things first, number one, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a backstory about why we're making this video. Number two, I'm gonna talk about how to choose the products to sell on Amazon within the UK. And then finally, number three, I'm gonna share some top tips with you that are gonna help you out. So let's get started. So first things first, let's give you a bit of an introduction to the video itself. So as you might all know, I've now been selling on Amazon for the last five years in the UK marketplace doing online arbitrage. And also as well, I started in the US about 11 months ago, obviously doing the same model again. Now with those years of experience selling in this marketplace and obviously the US marketplace as well, I'm also, should we say, should we say now, I'm actually going to share with you how to choose products to sell on Amazon by giving you products to avoid and also as well, which are the best categories to sell on and the best deal websites that you can find deals as well based on my own personal experience. Now, what I will say is that this is important to know because if you are, should we say, a new seller in Amazon, you are likely to have a hard time finding deals since you're probably gonna be, should we say, gated in a lot of categories and a lot of brands. So hopefully by watching this video today, you can have an idea of what types of products, what categories and what brands you as a beginner selling on the UK can do, obviously to get started in your Amazon business. Now, this leads me nicely onto my second chapter, which is actually what you came here for, how to choose which products sell on Amazon. Now, what I will say is that in this chapter, we're gonna be talking about the types of products to avoid selling on Amazon. Now, the categories you should look into as a new seller as well, and the deal websites that you can go to to look at to find profitable deals to resell on Amazon's marketplace. First things first, I will share with you the products to avoid selling on Amazon in the UK. The first type of product you want to try and avoid are called gated products. Now you might be asking what is a gated product? Well basically gated products means that they require Amazon's approval to sell and this might require as you say good performance of your account, getting invoices and other requirements. You might be asking why I'm not selling gated products on Amazon. Well let me tell you that you can buy gated products but it doesn't mean that you can actually sell them on the Amazon marketplace. But let me explain to you why you might want to think about selling gated products and specifically, what do I mean? Well, getting ungated so that you can now start selling those products you were previously gated in. Now, the reason why I say this is because you are going to have less competition. So if you have less competition, you're going to probably have a higher chance of winning the buy box. And that is where 90% of all sales come from. And obviously you're going to make more sales and obviously more profits. That is what we want. Now, what I advise for you to do is to get yourself ungated whenever you can. And to do this, you can use tools like SaaS, FBA Multitool, or BuyBot Pro, which have a feature which, she say, help you get ungated automatically or just make it simpler. Or you can go through the process of working with a manufacturer, a distributor, or a wholesaler to get a legitimate invoice by purchasing 10 items of those products or that product. Once you've got that invoice, you can then get yourself ungated. Now, if you wanna know how to get yourself ungated using a product or should we say using an invoice actually, then what I'll do is I'll drop a video above called top tips on how to get ungated on Amazon. Check that out, I think that'll help you. Now, the second type of product you're gonna to want to avoid is quite simply what's known as private label products. Now, what is a private label product? Well, these are gonna be products or goods which are manufactured by one company and they're gonna be branded by that company and sold by that company. Now, you might be asking why should we say, I want not wanna be selling private label products? Well, basically this is avoid issues like IP or intellectual property, complaints or claims. Now, these can result, should we say, in a loss of your selling privilege or other legal consequences when you get IP or intellectual property policy violations and you have too many of them. Now, just be careful because the idea is that they can cause you to lose your Amazon seller account and that is something you definitely don't want. 
Now, IP claims are something to be very well aware of, and it would take me a long time to go through it, but quite simply, I made another video about this, and if you want to learn more about IP claims, what I'll do is I'll drop a link above called What is an IP Claim? Top Tips How to Respond to IP Complaints Should You Get Them. So do check that out. I think that's going to help you. Now, generally speaking, when we talk about private label products, we're talking about a product which has been should say, created by, uh, should we say, another seller and reselling on Amazon, and generally there's only ever going to be one seller on the listing that is the owner of the product. Now, technically, private label products are any product that is a brand, should we say, and you can sell branded products, like Nike, for example, that is technically a private label product, but obviously you've got to make sure you're getting the right products and buying them from authorized distributors or, should we say, from the manufacturer themselves, in case there are questions around the authenticity of the product that you are buying. Now, the one thing which I'll say for you to help reduce down the likelihood of you getting, should you say, the intellectual property complaints, just have a look at the number of new sellers on a listing. And if you are seeing, should you say over time, it's always been pretty much one, maybe two sellers. There's never been anyone else on that listing. I'd probably stay well clear of that product because it's possibly a private label product, which they don't want other sellers selling that product. Now, the third type of products I want you to think about now is hazmat products. Now, hazmat products or hazardous products are basically any product that contains hazardous material or anything which is capable of posing a risk to health and safety or property when transported. Now, with that being said, selling hazardous products is going to require additional processes or documentation, such as documents like the health and safety data sheets or exemption sheets. Now, in addition to that, selling hazardous products will also have extra fees, considering that they're going to have to be shipped separately from other products that are not hazardous. Now, generally speaking, although there are other reasons why you might want to consider selling some hazardous products, one of which is you are less likely to get competition, since other Amazon sellers are generally not going to be selling hazardous products because of the extra hassle and additional requirements. Requirements. Now, what I will say is that if you want to sell hazardous products and you can do it, make sure that you apply for what's known as a dangerous goods program to sell on Amazon under the hazardous products program. After going through the types of products to avoid, I will share with you now the categories that you should be looking at as a beginner on Amazon that's going to really help you out in finding those products that you should be looking at. Now, the first category I really recommend for you is quite simple, is the grocery category. Now, what I will say about this category is that many of the suppliers drop their prices. So if you are looking to buy discounted products, obviously to make extra profit, then this is a category for you. What I will say is despite, should we say, low offers in category, the cons are selling under this category is that it is a perishable item, meaning to say that it's prone to say, damage or even going out of date. For example, chocolates, they can easily melt or she say the chips can break away on the chocolates if they're very decorative. So bear in mind that these items need extra care and obviously attention to detail. Not only that, but since these items are perishable, they have she say, expiration dates. Now, with that being the case, do double check the expiration dates for the supplier because what you might be doing is buying stock that won't have enough number of days or shelf life left on it before you ship it to Amazon and obviously what's going to happen they're going to reject it or they will actually get to the customer and the customer won't be happy and that will lead to complaints and that is not something that we want. Now if you want to learn more about she say expiration dated products what I'll do is I'll drop a link above to a video I called what you need to do when selling items with expiration dates check that out I think that's going to help you. Now the second category you really want to think about on my list and what we sell is beauty. Now in this category I've seen that most of the products under the beauty category are selling throughout any season which is fantastic. That's what we like. So if you're worried about maybe having excess stock within, should we say, Q1 after the busy Q4 period, then I can tell you that, you know, buying beauty products is going to be great because they sell all year round and you can keep selling them Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. That's why I like them. Now, this leads me to maybe one of the downsides of selling beauty products is that time and time again, we've seen that there is a lot more competition in this category because there are a lot of other Amazon sellers who are selling it, you know, under this category. So a tendency we tend to see is that prices are dropping until sellers fall into, should we say, price wars, or that does happen, price wars. So just be careful because there are undercutters and this is whereby one seller reduces their price, the other one undercuts that one and then undercuts and undercuts. So we have seen that quite heavily in the beauty category. Now, if you want to learn more and should we say some top tips about when you're in a price war, which is something you will see on the Amazon game, then what I'll do is I'll drop a video above that I created called top tips on how to manage, should we say, your price in a price war. Check that out. I think you're going to love it. Now, the third category I'm going to talk about on my list is pet supplies. Now, what I will say about this category is that most retailers do allow bulk orders. So you can buy a lot of it. So you've got a lot of cash. This is a great category to get involved. So if you're worried about 
maybe your order is getting cancelled or something you're seeing, or maybe they're limiting the number of orders you can do, which is something you do see in beauty, then she say pet supplies is going to be one of the categories you should be sourcing from and it's going to help you out. Now, aside from being able to purchase in bulk, which is something we really like, the one disadvantage you've got to just be aware of is that there are a lot of private label products in the category. Remember, that's something we talked about earlier. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is this an issue? Well, like I said earlier, if you're selling items that are private label, then you're likely to get what's known as an IP complaint. Now, remember, the thing is you can get one or maybe two IP complaints, but if you're getting too many, that can lead to you losing your Amazon account. So just be careful. Now, what I will say, is there are a lot of products within the pet category whereby they are not private labels. So this is still going to be a lot of you say, brands, a lot of products that you can buy and resell without getting IP complaints. Again, top tip, just make sure that you're checking the number of sellers as a bare basic. And if not, even more, go to the Fast Track FBA brand checker. I'll drop a link down below. So now that you've got an idea of you say, which type of products to avoid and which categories to sell in as a new seller on Amazon, you might want to consider you know, where you're actually going to buy them from. And this brings me nicely onto deal websites. Now, you might be asking what are deal websites? Well, basically, these are websites or platforms that you say, provide a list of deals shared by maybe different Amazon sellers or even just thrifty shoppers who like to share this information. Now, let me share with you some of the profitable deal websites that I've used in the past, which are gonna help you spot maybe opportunities to buy low and resell high for a profit on Amazon. First things first, number one, and I really like it, and it's a great place that you should be checking regularly, Hot UK Deals. Now, what I like about Hot UK Deals is that you can access it for free, you can get new deals every day, and with that being said, it creates a great opportunity to find deals easily, and obviously you can find deals that other thrifty shoppers are finding, sharing, and also you can get a you know, great buy low, resell high on Amazon. Now, there is a con when using Hot UK Deals is that by the nature of obviously we're talking about it now, a lot of other sellers do use this to find deals. And what does that mean? Well, you're probably going to find a lot more competition in the coming weeks after purchasing those products. So just be aware that the net result of that is that prices might be declined and that you should probably look at products with a healthy margin in it or high sales volume that's going to help you out. Now, my top tip for you when using Hot UK Deals is always to check the supplier. Why? Well, the last thing you want to do is find a great deal, but only find out the supplier is from Amazon or Amazon themselves, which is very common. Now, as an arbitrage seller, you're probably looking to buy from other suppliers to resell on Amazon. So obviously buying from Amazon sales technically can do, but you probably want to avoid because you're probably going to get into the, should you say, private label category, which is something you want to avoid. So always check the supplier before kind of doing your whole deal analysis to avoid wasting time obviously analyzing deal, which you're probably not gonna buy. Now, the second deal website that I like is called Latest Deals. Now, just like Hot UK Deals, this is a deal aggregation website whereby they find deals, you know, people are submitting them, and obviously you can review those deals and obviously do your analysis. Now, I like it because it's easy to navigate and it gives you clear information about, as you say, the products that you're, obviously they found cheap, but obviously it helps you do your analysis as well. Now, if you wanna know from me, we generally tend to find more deals posted on latest deals and hot UK deals as well, or should they, than hot UK deals. But that being said, one of the cons of latest deals is following on about deals posted. Unfortunately, you see there are, as you say, a lot of repetition on this website. We're seeing a lot of deals just constantly being repeated, which is a bit of a pain because it means you're reanalyzing a lot of deals that you've already done before. Although despite this con, it's still a very good website and it does have a lot of deals. So just be mindful of that. Now, my top tip for you when using latest deals is to join actually their Facebook group community where people are also sharing the deals in the community and not just on the website. That is super, super helpful. Okay, so right now I'm talking about finding deals, getting started as a new seller on Amazon. And the one thing which I will say is if you are thinking about or are actually getting started on Amazon right now. And obviously, if you say finding deals is a challenge, and this is very normal, by the way, it's probably one of the hardest parts of this arbitrage game. And what I'd say is look no further than Fast Track FBA Leads. This is a service I created whereby we have teams sourcing in the UK and in the USA. Quite simply, all my teams, they're finding the deals from all the websites, all these websites, they're putting them onto our platform. What do you do? Well, you buy tokens and then you get to browse every single deal that we have within our platform. When you found the ones that you like, looking at the 90 day profit, the keeper charts, all the data about it, we 
what you can do is you can exchange these tokens and unlock the deals. You then get the supplier URL and the Amazon ASIN. Obviously, go and buy the product, resell it high for a profit on the Amazon marketplace. Trust me, I think you're going to love it. It's a game changer and no one else is doing anything like this. Have a look down below. Fast Track FBA leads. Now, this leads me nicely onto my third chapter, top tips for you. So first things first, number one, what do I recommend? Subscribe to different stores, the newsletters on them. Super important. Now, what I will say is that whenever you find a great deal from a certain store, make sure that you're subscribing to their newsletter. Why? This is going to help you get notified of their discounts, voucher codes, and sales going forward. So if you want to be on the look for cheap products and be in the know, you've got to be updated on their promotions by being on their newsletter. Now, you might as well subscribe to their newsletters to obviously be in the know and to know that when it happens. Now, number two, I'd really say for you, aim for products with a good profit and ROI. Now, if you ask me, generally, we talk about a three pound profit and 30% ROI as a guide. And if you see that you're going to make a small profit from a product, then you might not risk it and you might move on. But if you're making roughly that or more, fantastic. That's going to help you and just make sure you're finding the profitable products which are going to help your business grow. Now, number three, I really recommend for you is do a test purchase. Maybe you found a product, but you're not sure. Maybe you're not sure what's going on or maybe you think maybe the competition is too high. What I'd recommend is do a test purchase. For that, what I advise is buy a couple of the products, maybe three to five something a small amount whereby if it doesn't work out, you're not going to lose big money. So if maybe you've got questions about the product itself, doing a test purchase can really help. Now, the top tip for number four for you, and I love this one, is build a list of top stores and products. Now, why do I say this? Well, quite simply, by building a list of top stores and top products that are really working for your business can help you form something called a replenishables list. This is going to be products which are, you know, you're going to reorder and also it's going to be stores which are working for you as well, whereby you can probably find those products and more from. So building that list it's going to be super, super important in helping you save time. Now, what I will say is after actually understanding how to choose products and categories to sell on Amazon UK, you might want to learn about the different sourcing techniques which can help you find more deals. What I'll do now is I'll drop a link around here called a playlist I created called Sourcing 101. Check that out. I think you're going to love it. But hopefully you've liked this video. If you have, give me a big thumbs up. And hey, if you want to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. For myself, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA, thank you very much.